Hello Warriors, how are you this morning? Let me just uh, turn up the brightness, there we go. Put that like that. How's the lighting? How are we looking? How's it all looking? How are you guys? I'm in my hoodie this morning, it's kind of cold here. Um, but there's waves. The wind is up and the forecast is for waves, which is always exciting. Hope you guys are well. Uh, these are the keys to mental well-being, and we'll get straight to them so that anyone who, hey, hey Michelin, we'll get straight to these so for anyone who's watching the recording can just go straight to the content. Um, firstly, hope you guys are all okay. It'd be lovely to hear from you in the comments and uh, say hi, hi Michelin. Um, and I'm just, I just want to quickly say before I begin actually one thing. I'm blown away by um, all of your interest in my book because um, it's incredibly humbling. Um, it's 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 truly uh, it was a massive, massive long journey, and um, I put my heart and soul into it, and it wasn't always easy. Um, there were a lot of times. Hey, Kath. There were a lot of times where I wanted to give up. Um, a lot of times where I was emotionally um, challenged by it, truly, genuinely challenged by it, but I stuck with it. And in the end, uh, <laughs> it's made its way to the biggest bookstore in Europe, in Piccadilly Circus in London. Um, and it was the very first book I saw when I walked in. Um, so it's just to have gone from thinking that this isn't, where am I going with this? Like, I've got no idea where this book is going to you guys actually kindly buying this book is just off the charts. Hey, Bobby from Las Vegas. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, so, yeah, when I saw that and I, my book was next to Tony Robbins book as well. And gee, Tony Robbins is a hero for me. And he is the big man. He is the hero. He is the 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 I think the, the greatest of all time for motivation and uh, so, yeah, to be next to him as well was, was just, uh, I mean, super humbling, super humbling. So, guys, let's get to it. So what are the three keys to mental, to mental health, to better mental health? For me, the first key is to not force the flow. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, okay, when we have a thought or feeling that um, we don't like or don't want, the automatic response is to try and stop it, get rid of it, use something else to challenge it, etc. <clears throat> a lot of that in, is found in CB, CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, where people are told to discuss, hey Elena, are, discuss, are told to discuss stuff inside their own head to figure it out. Now, now for me personally, um, I found and find that if I try to use positivity and try to be really positive like, no, Will, you're fine, everything's going to be okay, and this is fine, and that's all right, and don't you worry, and use gratitude. If I try to use, hey, Fiona, hey, Victoria, uh, positivity, when I'm dealing with thoughts in here and feelings in here that aren't what I want, it's like I add fuel to the fire, because what I end up doing is creating a distrust within me that says, so here's what it says to me in my inner psyche. Will, I don't trust that it's okay for you to have that thought and for you to have that feeling. And if it's not for, okay for me, it makes it 10 times worse. It's such a huge paradox. And truthfully, it's one of the biggest messages I've ever wanted to get across to anybody if I could really get that paradox across to someone whereby if they're in their day or in their morning or they're dealing with a difficult situation where they're just, if you're just able to breathe through it and just just notice your breath and be more observant at the moment, rather than judge yourself, rather than judge the thinking that you're having, because I think we judge ourselves so harshly. We beat ourselves up so much for the kinds of thoughts that we have, and if we have a thought of shame, or a thought of guilt, or a thought of anger, or we go, oh no, I'm a bad human being, this, is mean, this means I'm a, 
I'm a terrible human or I've got mental health issues or it's no fuck no <laughs> it's not the case at all you can be perfectly well and have really really good mental health yet have crazy thoughts in a day just because you've had a thought it doesn't make it true as my friend once said Ali Campbell just because you've had a thought doesn't make it true and when you just become more able to observe your thinking as opposed to dive in and try and change it the more and more you're going to find yourself in better mental health now how do you do that how do you become better at, at observing your thinking and observing thoughts rather than like trying to change it and, and make things worse well the way you do that is you meditate and you meditate every day um and you Ideally, try and do it twice a day, once in the morning for 10 to 20 minutes, and then once in the evening for 10 to 20 minutes. Now, I practice this thing, let me have a sip of water, called Wake P Meditate, WPM. So it's basically wake up, straight in for a P, straight into meditation, so that nothing else can get in the way, because I think often, um, you know, before we've got the kids up, and we're doing breakfast, and we're doing a our food and with this and this, da, 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 whatever, the, 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 the day can get away from you. So just get straight up, take a pee, meditate, and you'll get it more into your life. That's a really good productivity hack on that one. Um, second key to better mental well-being, uh, mental health, is to talk. If you're dealing with something or someone that's really, really challenging you, where is the harm in speaking to a counsellor? Where is the harm in speaking to your partner? Where is the harm in opening up to a friend or whoever it may be? It's amazing because we store up so much at times. And of course, I think 90% of it just needs to be observed. 90% of it just needs to pass through and it will. And if we can just take deep breaths, then it genuinely will pass through. Um, but there are a lot of occasions where we really need to talk and it's good to talk and it's good to accept help from other people. Um, the, the word of caution on this one is to know who you're talking with. Now, if you're talking with someone who is, who is likely to give you a solution, who is likely to want to, um, try and counter what you're saying or give you uh, problem solving, all those kinds of things, then that might not be the counsel that you're looking for. Because often what we want to be is just heard. Is it, am, am I right? Like I'll give you an example. Like last night, my wife is the most amazing counselor. Like I am, uh, I am who I am in so many ways because of my wife. She is just such she she has emotional stuff at times and, and mental health stuff of course she does she's like any human being in the world but her ability to listen and just listen without her bias or interpretation is a remarkable gift and so I last night I was, I was dealing with something that was a little bit tricky um, emotionally and just speaking to my wife about it just got it all out in the air and it just made it so, I made, it made me feel so much calmer and so much better. So if you are dealing with something, if you ever do deal with something, something and you tend to store it up, how could you just, how could you open up to people a bit more? And, and can I just suggest something when you do open up to people is, is do it in a way that is still erring towards the positive. Because for me, I think there's a very fine line between being vulnerable and expressing emotion and then just moaning. Oh, this isn't good and that's a bit crap and I'm hating this and hating that because that all to me is very pessimistic and we can always choose optimism if we want uh, I think optimism is always something within our power so just be cautious to the fact that when you're when you are speaking with people and you are being vulnerable that uh, yes that's very very important and it's important to mental health it is definitely because you're showing your true self and you're making it okay to be your true self which creates self-trust and creates um, gets all those kinds of feelings out and all these good stuff. But also, and also, we've got to keep a handle on the fact that the person we're speaking with is still a human being. 
we've still got to consider their feelings, consider the fact that if we drag down the vibration and drag down that energy that, that actually no one's going to get anywhere. So go into any vulnerable moment with someone or even a post that you make or post on the group or talk with someone to know that, yes, it's really important to talk. And also it's really important to keep things positive. Notice that if, as you keep talking, as you keep talking, try to come to your solution. And I'll give you an example. I tend to do this sometimes and it may seem like I'm crazy, but I'm sure a lot of you do this. Where if I really, really need to talk and there isn't anyone around, I'll talk to myself out loud and go through the whole thing, the whole thread of what I need to get to and then try and get to the solution at the end. It's actually quite a cool way of doing it. Like when you're doing chores and you're going, well, this and this because that is like that and that goes over there. And when you get there and I know that's not easy, Will, but you've got another talk and, and then eventually you get to this point where I go. And but then you see, that's the answer. And I sort of do it like this and do it like this um, and, and, and do it out loud. So if you haven't necessarily got anyone to talk to, then talk to the brick wall. I don't know. But um, for me, that's helped in the past. It's a way of. Um, getting my thoughts and feelings out into the open. And then the last thing on that one is if you don't have anyone to talk to is to write it down on, on, a, on a journal. Write down, hi Eileen, is to write down your thoughts and feelings on a journal. And then again, that can give you that new perspective as well. Um, the final key, the final key to mental health is things like this. Getting to bed on time every night at the same time. Ideally trying to get up each morning at the same time. Drinking loads of water. Eating really, really healthy food. Um, perhaps fasting every day. So so not going so going without food until at least one o'clock each day, maybe. And that's for me, that's been a huge one for the mind body axis. Um, to feeling more well in my body. Um, exercise. Exercise, deep breathing, all these things. Now, the thing about exercise is that, hey, Meve, hey, Rose, is that it produces something called an endorphin. And an endorphin is the precursor to um, superb mental energy, mental clarity and confidence. And it's why exercise is a superb, phenomenal way of feeling better, feeling happier, of, of, of if you've been dealing with difficult situations, it just breaks you out of that cycle, gets you back into that positive state. For me, it's my surfing, it's my yoga, it's my stretching, it's, it's, it's my walks. I do do workouts as well with weights and, and, and get a sweat on and stuff. It, if I've been having a difficult day or difficult emotions, which is normal, I mean, geez, I'm just like anybody else, um... I can have a surf and it just puts everything in perspective. And I think it puts things in perspective for two reasons. One, it's being out in nature and nature doesn't give a fuck about me. She doesn't give a fuck. And I love her for that. I love her for that because A, yes, she doesn't give a fuck about me. She doesn't know that I exist. But also at the same exact time, She's completely accepting of me. So being out in nature is this wonderful yin and yang of, God, I'm just, I'm just out in nature. Mother nature, ain't got, <laughs> Mother nature doesn't care about me. And that's quite liberating, actually. It's like a sense of freedom. But at the same time, she accepts you because, of course, it ju nature just is. And it's just Zen, and that's what's beautiful about it. So for me, it's connecting with nature, is, is surfing and, and exercising outdoors, like whether it's running or doing what, like walking outdoors or whatever it may be. And then the second, like I said, is the endorphins, this, this rush of positive hormones you get from like exercising your body. So maybe a challenge for you today is to get out in nature and do a really full-on hike, do an hour's hiking in nature, or maybe today if you can get out and do a workout in nature or... Maybe if you can go surfing or go in the sea or whatever, but um, see if today you can get out in nature and do and extend your time in nature today. See if you can do that, if you have the capability to better do that. Um, there are those three keys, my friend. Number one, observe your thinking. 
through meditation and you want to slowly train your mind in how to be more observant because it's a practice. It takes time. A lot of you might be thinking, geez, this is that's, that seems like a wonderful thing to just be able to observe thought passing through my head. But I just, oh, it takes time and be patient, my friend. Keep meditating every single day and I promise you, you're going to get better and better and better and better. And the better you get, the more observant you're going to be of those thoughts coming through so that when you are in the day and you have that weird one that you don't like, that weird thought, you'll just be really, really good at just noticing it go through because you've done your meditation. It's like a, it's like a, it's like if you want to get better at hitting tennis balls, you've got to go hit tennis balls. The mind is the same way. It's called neural plasticity. And the better and better and better and better, and the more and more and more you practice at just observing thought coming through rather than changing it or trying to change it, the better you get. So just keep practicing. The second key is to talk more, be more expressive, and um, you know, seek counsel from people, but do it in a positive way. Be really, really, really positive about it and, and come to your optimistic end result because there always is one. There always, always is one. If we just choose it, we have the power to be optimistic if we really summon it and just decide to be optimistic. And the last one is to do workouts, drink water, get to bed on time, um, get out in nature, get those endorphins up, do your stretches. Really use that beautiful body of yours and take tremendous care of it because your body has an effect on your mind. The body and mind access is or axis is, is there and it's real. My friend, that's all from me today. I'm going to be live again tomorrow with keys to weight loss, weight loss uh, tips. And um, I just would love to hear your feedback. Do you like these shorter videos? Are these things you want to keep seeing? Um, if you do, great. Please comment below. I really do enjoy them myself. They really fit in well with my day, I'll be honest. And uh, I do enjoy them as well. So have a great day, my friends. I love you loads. Bye-bye.